The opening scene of this film shows a boat heading towards a post on the riverbank. The post is where traders, hunters, and Native Americans mingle, busy with their respective activities. And here begins the journey of Jeremiah Johnson. After buying a horse, hunting traps, and necessary equipment, Johnson starts his adventure by following the directions given by one of the traders. In his first season on the mountain, Johnson, who has minimal experience in the wilderness, struggles to survive hunger and cold. One time, while trying to catch fish with his bare hands, he accidentally encounters an Indian. He prepares his rifle, but the Indian leaves without a word. The next day, while Johnson is hunting, he discovers a frozen corpse. Johnson, fearlessly, examines the body and finds a note. It is revealed that the deceased is Hatchajack, a hunter whose leg was injured in a bear attack. The note states that he bequeaths his hawk and rifle to whoever finds his body. Johnson continues his journey and encounters a crazy old man named Bear Claw, a grizzly bear hunter who collects bear claws to make necklaces. He invites the hungry Johnson to his cabin. While Johnson is eating, he suddenly hears Bear Claw running and laughing towards the cabin. To his surprise, Johnson sees the old man leading a grizzly bear into the cabin. Fortunately, Johnson manages to shoot the bear. That night, when Johnson asks for advice on the right time to head west, Bear Claw, knowing that Johnson lacks survival skills in the mountains, says that Johnson will starve to death within a week if he continues his journey. The next day, Bear Claw starts teaching Johnson how to survive. One of the lessons is how to make traps. While sharpening a stone, Bear Claw tells stories about various indigenous tribes, including the tough and frightening pro Indians. Bear Claw continues teaching Johnson how to make a warm bed during winter. He creates charcoal, digs a hole, fills it with the charcoal, and covers it with soil. Johnson follows Bear Claw's instructions and creates a similar hole. That night, while they are sleeping, Johnson suddenly wakes up to smoke rising from his bear fur blanket. It turns out Johnson didn't dig the hole deep enough, and the charcoal burned him. The next day, Bear Claw teaches Johnson how to hunt deer by approaching them while hiding behind his horse. Eventually, Johnson successfully shoots a deer. After skinning the deer, Bear Claw realizes that they are in the territory of the Crow Indian tribe. As expected, they are intercepted by the Crow Indians. Bear Claw talks to the chief of the Crow tribe, paint his shirt red, who turns out to be the Indian man Johnson encountered while catching fish in the river. Bear Claw, aware of the rules when entering the Crow territory without permission, must offer a bribe to pass through. Bear Claw offers his bear claws, but they are rejected by the tribe's chief. Ultimately, Johnson offers the deer skin. After taking the deer skin, the chief of the Crow tribe asks for Johnson's name, marking their formal introduction. After learning a lot from Bear Claw, Johnson continues his journey. Along the way, he becomes skilled in hunting, except for catching fish. Knowing the rules in the Crow territory, Johnson meets the chief. He presents the deer skin from his hunt, and the chief kindly gives him a blanket. They seem to have become acquainted. One day, while riding his horse, Johnson suddenly hears a woman crying. When he investigates the source of the sound, he finds a woman mourning the recent massacre of her three children by an Indian tribe. The woman noticed Johnson and grabbed a weapon, pointing it at him. Johnson, remaining calm, advised them to bury the children. The woman was still in shock from the death of her children. So Johnson went to her hut and was surprised to find that one child had survived the massacre. The next morning, when Johnson was about to continue his journey, he felt sympathy for the woman and her child. He invited them to join him in a safer place. Upon hearing this, the woman, who was still in front of her children's graves, ran towards Johnson and asked him to take her child only. During the journey, the child brought by Johnson was traumatized and became mute. Johnson named him Caleb. Shortly after, Johnson encountered a man who had been buried alive, with only his head exposed. His name was Delgu, and he had been robbed by Indians. Delgu asked for Johnson's help in finding the Indian who had robbed him. They located the Indian from a distance and decided to wait and observe. It was revealed that they were from the Blackfeet Indian tribe, the same tribe that had massacred Caleb's family. Johnson, not wanting trouble with the Indian tribe, suggested that Delgu sneak in at night and retrieve his stolen belongings. However, Delgu disregarded the plan and instead slaughtered the Blackfeet tribe members and scalped them. In the next scene, Johnson asked Delgu what he planned to do with the scalps. Delgu answered that he would sell them to the English as wall decorations. Soon after, Delgu, who had realized the arrival of an Indian tribe, placed the Blackfeet scalps on Johnson's saddle. A group of Indian tribe members appeared. Unexpectedly, they were the Flathead tribe, the archenemies of the Blackfeet tribe. One of the Flathead tribe members noticed the Blackfeet scalps on Johnson's saddle. 
they decided to welcome Johnson as a sign of respect. Johnson, Caleb, and Delgu finally arrived at the Flathead tribe settlement. The tribe's leader, Tutungs Lebu, invited Johnson, Delgu, and Caleb to his tent. Delgu, able to translate the chief's words, mentioned that the Blackfeet scalps and Johnson's horse were impressive. Johnson responded by suggesting that the Flathead chief should take them. Delgu panicked and scolded Johnson for his actions, saying that if they give something to the Flathead tribe, they should receive something of greater value in return. Otherwise, it would be an insult to them. After discussing with the Flathead tribal leaders, the chief decided to give his daughter in marriage to Johnson. The wedding between Johnson and the chief's daughter, named Swan, took place immediately. Johnson had no choice but to accept because refusing would be an insult to the Flathead tribe. Swan, the chief's daughter, appeared from her tent. Swan, without makeup or filters, captivated Delgu. After congratulating Swan and the tribal chief, Delgu left, not wanting to disturb the newlyweds. Johnson, who initially wanted to embark on an adventure alone, now has to be accompanied by a non-English speaking wife and a foster child who refuses to speak. And so it is complete. In the next scene, Johnson and Caleb stop to give their horses a drink by the river. Swan begins to show the qualities of an ideal wife. Without being asked, she is seen preparing lunch. Johnson tries Swan's cooking, but the aroma is not as good as the taste. He hides Swan's food in his saddlebag. At night, while Caleb is asleep, Johnson breaks the silence by telling Swan that this marriage was not his desire. Swan, who had been silent and lost in thought, turns to Johnson and assumes he is asking her to start farming. As a devoted wife, she immediately lies down on the peat field and gets ready to farm. Their journey continues, and as usual, Johnson has to hunt for food. He is seen stalking a bird and preparing to shoot it. However, Swan suddenly comes and demonstrates her hunting skills by simply throwing a stone to kill the bird. In the following days, Swan is seen boiling water while observing Johnson bringing back his hunting results. Initially, Swan smiles, but for some reason, Swan and Caleb appear disappointed with the hunting results. Johnson goes to check his fish trap, and for the first time, it successfully catches a fish. Swan and Caleb look happy, and Johnson smiles and nods. And that's the meme for you guys. After moving from one place to another for a long time, Johnson builds a house from a pile of tree logs. The gaps between the logs are filled with compacted mud mixed with dried grass. Caleb, who used to be gloomy, can smile again. Just like Johnson and Swan who have become more comfortable as husband and wife. They are happy with their new home and life. As night falls, Johnson, who plans to hunt buffalo the next day, prepares his rifle, while Swan sews a fur coat to keep Johnson warm during the hunt. The next day, Johnson sets off. He is skilled in surviving in winter conditions, as taught by Bearclaw. While hunting buffalo, Johnson hears his horse neighing. It turns out his horse is being attacked by a pack of wolves. Johnson has to fight the wolf pack. Although he successfully drives away and kills some of the wolves, one of them manages to injure Johnson. Upon returning home, he is cared for by his wife Swan. Johnson appears grateful to have a wife he never wanted but who now cares for him the most. When Johnson has recovered slightly, he takes Caleb to set up a fish trap in the river. But before leaving, he notices Swan's chin turning red and realizes that she is allergic to his beard. After shaving his beard, Johnson returns to the cabin with a clean-shaven face. Swan briefly does not recognize Johnson, as he looks like a stranger. Upon hearing the news that Johnson befriended the Crow tribe and became familiar with the mountain paths, a patrol unit led by Lieutenant Malby approaches Johnson. The lieutenant asks Johnson for help in rescuing some people stranded in the mountains. Reluctantly and with a heavy heart, Johnson agrees to accompany the unit. During the journey, Johnson comes across a sacred burial ground of the Crow tribe. The place is strictly forbidden to pass through. Johnson suggests finding an alternative route, but the lieutenant and his unit ignore his suggestion, arguing that the stranded people will freeze to death if not rescued quickly. Dilemma rises for Johnson, and he eventually decides to cross the burial ground. They feel relieved as nothing happens while crossing the burial ground, and after a while, they finally locate the missing group. Johnson tells Lieutenant Mulvey and his team to leave immediately. As the day began to darken, Johnson returned by crossing the burial ground. A feeling of unease engulfed Johnson as he rode his horse slowly, his eyes fixed on the Indian skeletons in the cemetery. Suddenly, Johnson stopped and noticed a skeleton with belongings belonging to his wife, Swan. Seeing this, Johnson hurriedly returned to the cabin. Upon arriving, he saw that the yard of his house was in disarray. As he opened the door, Johnson discovered the lifeless bodies of his wife and Caleb, killed. 
Johnson approached slowly and examined the bodies of his wife and Caleb. Without explosive tears, Johnson sat silently, filled with grief. Days passed, and his face transformed from sorrowful to a worn-out and somber appearance. He began to rise from his seat when his horse suddenly appeared at the door. He wrapped Caleb's and Swan's bodies, ironically using the blanket given by the Crow tribe chief. After burning Swan's and Caleb's bodies, along with the cabin, Johnson, filled with anger, began to search for traces of the Crow tribe who had killed his family. Johnson's efforts were not in vain as he managed to find some resting Crow tribe member. Without hesitation, Johnson killed each member of the Crow tribe one by one, except for one person who seemed resigned to their fate, singing a death song for themselves. After the incident, Johnson returned to his burnt cabin. While fishing, Johnson was approached by a Crow tribe member assigned to kill him. Knowing the intentions of the Crow tribe member, Johnson began to fight for his life. Fortunately, despite being slightly injured near his eye, Johnson managed to kill the Crow tribe member. In the following days, Johnson was once again hunted by the Crow tribe, hiding in the snow. However, their attempts to kill Johnson failed. In the next scene, while riding his horse, Johnson encountered his old friend, Delgue, who appeared to have grown out his hair. During the night, Delgue started asking about Caleb, Johnson's adopted son, and his wife Swan. Johnson responded vaguely, saying that they were fine. While they were engrossed in conversation, a spear suddenly impaled between Delgue's legs. True enough, another member of the Crow tribe attacked them. Fortunately, Johnson once again managed to kill the attacker. At that moment, Delgue realized that this was Johnson's current life, being hunted by the Crow tribe. Delgue told Johnson that the stronger the enemy, the higher one's dignity would be. The next day, Johnson and Delgue had to part ways. Delgue wanted to go to a place called Big Belt Blue to hunt for otters, while Johnson planned to go to Canada, a place that hadn't been explored much by humans. Throughout his journey, the Crow tribe never grew tired of hunting Johnson. Day after day, month after month, Johnson had to fight to survive their attacks. One time, while riding his horse, a bullet missed Johnson's rifle handle. Startled and falling off his horse, Johnson pretended to be dead from the bullet. As the Crow tribe approached, Johnson observed his horse's gaze to determine the position of the attacking Crow members. When he turned around and fired, Johnson managed to hit one of the Crow tribe members, but a spear thrown by the Crow tribe struck his stomach. With a still wounded abdomen, Johnson returned to the cabin where he first met Caleb and his mother. Peeking through the window, Johnson saw a frightened man holding a rifle behind the door. The man was startled to see Johnson. Without wasting time, Johnson asked where the crazy woman was, referring to Caleb's mother, the man, named Quaylen and a new occupant of the cabin, informed Johnson that the crazy woman he mentioned had already passed away and was buried near the graves of her children. While inspecting the storage shed, Johnson discovered the Quaylen family hiding inside. Quaylen and his family thought they were being attacked by the Indian tribe. After a while, Quaylen started to suspect that the man approaching him was Johnson, the person most sought after by the Crow tribe. Johnson paid no attention to Quaylen's words and noticed a grave with Indian artifacts on it. Quaylen explained that this grave was not like the others, it was a monument or memorial created by the Crow tribe to honor one of their greatest enemies, Johnson himself. Some time later, while enjoying the spoils of his hunt, Johnson was approached by someone on horseback. It turned out to be his old friend, Bearclaw. Bearclaw had relocated due to his cabin being notorious for snow avalanches. Seeing Johnson, who had now become a rugged mountain man, Bearclaw observed the hardships and struggles he had faced. After parting ways with Bearclaw, Johnson continued his journey and noticed paint his shirt red, the chief of the Crow tribe, observing him from a distance. Johnson discreetly prepared his rifle, but was surprised to see the chief raise his right hand as a sign of peace. Johnson, following suit, raised his hand as well, marking the end of his feud with the Crow tribe. 